This time on World in America, it's a community on the rise. Take in a sample of their culture and discover their dreams for the future. Meet the Azerbaijani Americans. It's food and celebration, tradition and Nowruz all rolled into one. There's an old Azerbaijani proverb that goes, until spring comes, nightingales do not sing. Well, for many Azerbaijani Americans, now seems to be the time to make their voices heard. But for a better look at their story, we first go back to the land of their roots, Azerbaijan. Bordered by Russia and Armenia, Georgia and Iran, it's where the Southern Caucasus reach the Caspian Sea. 8.6 million people reside in the country, roughly the size of Maine. Baku, the largest city, is a World Heritage Site and the capital of the nation. More than 90% of the population speaks Azerbaijani, a Turkic language, and most follow Islam. Christian and Jewish communities centuries old remain vibrant. Azerbaijanis of every background take pride in their country. They often speak of its nine climates, ample resources, and abundant reserves of oil. Visitors may find their hospitality, art, music, and poetry just as valuable. Since their independence in 1991, the people of Azerbaijan have been eager to share with the world. See what they've done with their energy and optimism here in the U.S. when World in America returns. We're back with more of Azerbaijan in America. Saying Azerbaijan, I mean first of all land. I mean uh, first of all uh, country where my parents uh, born, where my family lives. Uh, maybe all this. Uh, reasons all these things together makes Azerbaijan Azerbaijan. Any immigrant, anybody who leaves their country and goes to a, a foreign country, leaves behind their homeland, sometimes they leave behind all their friends and family, uh, it's unbelievable for me. According to one estimate, nearly a million people of Azerbaijani descent now live in the U.S. It's a growing and dynamic community. Much of their diversity stems from the different waves that brought them here. According to different estimation, we have uh, more than uh, one million Azerbaijanis in the United States. They settled mainly in uh, California, uh, Houston, New York. The first wave, as far as I understood, came after the Bolshevik Revolution in the beginning of the uh, 20th century. And uh, I think that was the biggest one the, because of Stalin uh, time. They didn't risk to come back to the Azerbaijan, to Soviet Union, and they decided to remain uh, in the Western Europe and United States. The last wave it's, uh, was the uh, collapse of Soviet Union with some, uh, especially first years of uh, after the collapse of Soviet Union with the military conflict with uh, Armenia, with some internal troubles, economic and political. Today, Azerbaijani Americans across the board have found their own secrets to success. But whether you own a restaurant in Texas or trade stock in the Big Apple, Making it is rarely a simple deal. It's 
some people facing a number of uh, difficulties, especially in the uh, initial period of their stay in the United States. States. Uh, first of all is language. To become a part of society, you, you need good knowledge of the, 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 the language. It's important. Not that having to learn a second language comes as something new. Many Azerbaijanis already speak Russian, as well as their native tongue. But for trained professionals with years of study behind them, starting from scratch can be a unique challenge. Secondly, uh, the difference in the education. You know, a number of professions uh, like, for example, doctors, medicine uh, doctors, medical doctors and lawyers, they need to get additional uh, licenses, uh, diplomas and etc. To, to start work here. And uh, that's another difficulty. Eastern culture has a certain mindset about relationships between people, between different generations, older and younger, between men and women, between you know, members of, of the, uh, the one part of society and, a, and another part of society, like the, the working class and the upper class. They, they have these problems over there and they bring them over here. And they come here and here we are, everybody's equal. You know, okay, we have poor people and rich people here too, but uh, there's a different mindset in America about all these interrelations between you. They have to adjust to that. With time, they uh, managed to overcome all these troubles, these difficulties, and after some period, a lot of people, they don't want to go back. They prefer to stay here. They're very happy with their life, yeah. <laughs> some find happiness in both countries. For Jeffrey Werbach, the culture of Azerbaijan is a way of life. His home in New Jersey could match the decor of any in Baku. Local Azerbaijanis call him one of their own. I'm an American. I was born in this country, as were my parents. My grandparents were immigrants to this country a hundred years ago, so I'm part of what they call second generation uh, American. Well, my first uh, awareness of Azerbaijan was uh, in the year of 1971. I was 19 years old and I read a book about a man who was born and raised in the Caucasus, the name of the word Azerbaijan, it like it jumped off the page and it, it touched something in me. I can't, I can't even to this day explain what it was, even after 35 years. When I had the good luck to meet with an old man from Dagestan who played the Azerbaijani Kamancha. And so I was prepared for this meeting and the meeting was very important because at that moment my life as an American came to a, a, a point where I now was going to include in my, in my inner life the, the world of the Caucasus, especially Azerbaijan. He traveled to the country, learned the language, and most importantly, devoted himself to Azerbaijani classical music. Under the tutelage of leading authorities, he became a master in his own right. Today, he gladly shares his adopted culture with other Americans. One way is by teaching at Temple University. The professor of the World Music Course uh, is, is, a, is a friend of mine, and so she's invited me over there you know, repeatedly. And, uh, and so just yesterday I was there giving some lectures, and the, the, they would sit and listen, they put their move their head like this. They don't know this music and yet they they begin to understand that there's something really wonderful in it. They pick up on it immediately. If you say, but Jeffrey, you're playing for non-Azerbaijanis, do they understand? I say, no, they don't understand, but they feel. And they feel everything that's important to feel and they're in favor of it. They, they want to hear it, they want to hear more. Uh, when the class is over, they are sad. They, some of them say, please, if you have a performance, contact me, let me know. I want to come and hear some more of your music. To the avid listener, the music of Azerbaijan stands apart, with instruments like the oud, 
tar, and kamancha, it harmonizes Turkish folk tunes with scales made for Persian kings. Over time, Azerbaijanis have produced many styles of music, but one form, known as mugam, rises to the top. Get ready. When World in America returns, we'll witness a true maestro sharing his talent. Mugam is a, um, uh, it's art music, it's the right word for it, art, as opposed to folk music. Folk music is, you know, singing and dancing, but Mugam is you sit and you listen. It's not for dancing. <laughs> Most muram is in the this, in this sung version of it. There's also instrumental muram. I specialize in instrumental muram. Many, many thousands of years ago, when civilization was just beginning to appear and cultures were appearing, each region had a local indigenous culture and a local indigenous music that was part of their culture. And I think what muram is, is I think it's a synthesis of two cultures. One is uh, something that originated in ancient Egypt, which over time became the basis for what is now known as the Islamic call to prayer. into a place in me I did not know existed and touched something so deep I didn't know there was such a deep thing in a human being. In Mugam, also known as Makam in Arabic or Daska in Persian, music flows in intricate patterns. The notes are improvised, the meaning spiritual. The test of a performer is to take the ancient melodies and open them up by playing directly from the heart. Of course, in Azerbaijani company, music isn't the only good thing to go around. Here in the United States, one place to enjoy their cuisine is Chinar on the island. Chinar means maple, and this Staten Island restaurant uses the golden tree as its emblem. One look at their impressive menu will show you why. Lamb is the, is the first meat of Azerbaijani cuisine. They also have uh, what they call malat, which we call beef. Right? They have it, but mainly lamb is their number one source for food, for, for meat, lamb and sheep. Meat is a staple on Azerbaijani tables. Azerbaijani lambs have a, a, a sheep and the tail is a big fat tail. I've never seen it anywhere else. Our sheep have these little tails, so all the fat is concentrated in the tail and the meat is, is a little leaner. Soups made with painstaking care always bring smiles. Another dish that they make is called piti. And piti is made in these small earthenware ceramic pots and it's made from uh, lamb and lamb bones. The bones are so soft you can eat them. They crunch like candy. That's quite tasty. PT is quite tasty. One dish stars leg of lamb smothered in mouth-watering vegetables. Chashlama. Chashlama is you put layers and layers of, of lamb, onions, tomatoes, peppers, and uh, eggplant. Then another layer, lamb, onions, tomatoes. You put it on top, the lid, close it up, you know, season it with salt and pepper, and then you let it and slow cooked. So when it comes out, everything is tender and soft. <laughs> the food brings more than great taste. Served in restaurants or in the comfort of home, these dishes offer Azerbaijani Americans a sense of connection. The Azerbaijanis here, when they get together, they do make their traditional dishes and they put the, the, uh, the spread out and they'll have all the different things. They, they pretty much replicate uh, what they do in Azerbaijan.
These days, Azerbaijani Americans say they have a lot to be excited about. Typically, they celebrate Independence Day twice, on July 4th for the U.S. and for Azerbaijan on October the 18th. Recently, crowds in New York honored the flags of both nations. They will uh, give us the uh, opportunity to say a few words, some speeches, then the national item of Azerbaijan, and we'll raise the, our national flag. So that's in brief the scenario of uh, today's event. It's my great honor and privilege to be here on Broadway in New York in the ceremony of raising national flag of Azerbaijan alongside the United States flag to celebrate the 16th anniversary of my country's independence. This is an extraordinary day in our history. We are celebrating the 18th October as one of the monumental, fundamental days in our life. 16 years ago, we have established this date as the restoration of our independence. It really is a pleasure to be here. Um, we are incredibly proud of the Azerbaijani community here in New York City. We have about 3.6 million immigrants and the Azerbaijani community has played a vital role in building the economy uh, and the social life of the city of New York. So good afternoon, I'm Ozzy Khalili and I am with the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs here in New York City and I brought Mayor Bloomberg's greetings to the Azerbaijani communities and we wanted to celebrate uh, the 16th anniversary of the independence of Azerbaijan from the Soviet Union and we're very proud to have an opportunity to celebrate this event with the Azerbaijani community. The event was held in Manhattan's historic Bowling Green, not far from Wall Street, and the famous Charging Bull statue. New York and Azerbaijani dignitaries attended the program. A key organizer for the day was deeply moved. After years of oppression, Azerbaijan was free again. Today, 16 years later to the day, we who honor and revere both Azerbaijan and the United States of America can hardly express what it means to see the two flags of these two nations flying together high. This is the center of the universe, the middle of New York, every, known by everyone in the world. Um, it is our pleasure. This is. Uh, wonderful place to be raising Azerbaijani flag right next to American flag which uh, in our organization uh, was established 50 years ago we grew up in this country without Azerbaijan but knowing we are Azerbaijanis but we didn't have Azerbaijan We should be together and we should know that, you know, we first of all Azerbaijanis, first of all we have to maintain our culture, our history, our language. The festivities continued. As evening fell, the venue shifted to Brooklyn Borough Hall. There, Borough President Marty Markowitz hosted a ceremony and reception to mark the achievements of Azerbaijani Americans living in that part of the city. Entertainment and awards ensued. It was a major coming out party for the community. The warm and stately gala even gave a taste of Azerbaijani opera. United States, Azerbaijani Americans work hard to preserve their customs. Attitudes do vary, however, among the generations. As with other communities, each family must work out its own balance of tradition. The older generation, uh, a lot of them, they're trying to keep their identity, but uh, time is doing its, its jobs, yeah, so. They have a great respect for the older people, and the children 
don't talk back to their elders. They don't mock them. They don't answer back. Uh, and I remember they, they would uh, sit, and even the, even the teenage boys, teenagers, boys you know, who are supposed to be aggressive they're so sweet and mild they'll sit there and like for almost with a, a look they'll jump up and go run to the kitchen and bring tea and serve the guests you know they almost don't have to say anything that's how like they're keen they're waiting for the word for young generation everything is easier yeah so uh, to adopt to, to, to become i would say part of society for them also is not such a big task not a difficult task uh, but Yes, we have, we have some Azerbaijanis who didn't keep anything Azerbaijani except their names maybe, and some two or three words. The parents are respected. If the mother works, the father works, you're going to, pay, you're going to give your, your parents respect because the children are aware of the fact that you know, this is not you know, like something that's coming from you know, God or something like that. The parents have to work to bring home the money to put the food on the table, and the children respect that. Uh, through these uh, societies, through uh, associations, newspapers, and etc., how people are trying to keep its own identity. It's the general picture. Azerbaijanis in general are a warm hearted people. Azerbaijanis are also incredibly well educated. Azerbaijan has a 99% literacy rate, even in the villages. They have this tremendous open-hearted welcoming. Uh, uh, and it's not just Eastern hospitality, which the Persians, the Turks, they all have that. Arabs, they have it. It's something more than that. They not only welcome the guests uh, in, in, with the typical Eastern hospitality, but if the guest is, a, is an outsider from another culture, it's really, uh, they almost go too far. I mean, their openness, like, they almost want to say, your culture is even greater than ours. Across the country, Azerbaijani Americans feel their day has arrived. They say they're ready to share the best of their culture and invite others to do the same.